You made it. Welcome back, you BEA beautiful souls. Today's video, I'm going to talk about how to actually get better and how to start off in a good state when you first start for honor or in the middle of trying to get a little bit better in the game. I want to say that a lot of people have been asking this on stream and one of the best things you could probably start doing is honestly pick a good character, like a strong character that can deal a lot of the nonsense that For Honor throws at us and also a lot of the things that For Honor can teach you. Like the stronger your character is, the more chances you can survive in anti-ganks, duels and clutch out your fight and that is also why i never really recommend people to start playing shaman because she can be quite a hard character to use because her hitboxes are super bad in team fights her dueling capabilities are strong but you also pretty much need some decent reads and reactions to make her 100 percent useful because she will require you to make a read upon a read in case people try to light check you with a bunch of frame advantage and all that good stuff. So with the character like Shaman, she's incredibly strong 1v1s, but in team fights where most people are playing this game casually and just trying to mash buttons, if you don't know how to operate your defense with this character, which she doesn't have that much besides a delayed dodge attack, you're gonna get stomped. And that's why characters like Rankian Guard, Orochi, and also Hitokiri are very important picks when a new player comes into the game because when they start pressing buttons, things just work in their favor. And that can be a good thing, but there's also a few bad things that I want to point out with the character. So when you're playing a character like Orochi or Hitakiri and Ranging Guard, these characters can definitely have some decent offense and very good defense. Defense with Ferengian's crushing counters, her dodge attacks, and of course her full block. Rochi with his really strong 50-50 mix and his tar swap dodge attacks, just getting external 24-7 with this character and undodgeable stuff. Then of course we have Hitukiri, which has good defense by having strong hyper armor. Then of course variable time to heavies. These guys will help carry you into higher MMR lobbies. But the thing is, when you play a character like Hitukiri, which is a very big noob trap in my opinion, when you start to fight other players that can actually start pairing you or make good reads against your mix-ups, you will start to fall short of understanding character fundamentals. And the fundamentals that I'm talking about is learning how to make good reads, revenge tags, and I think one of the most important things is parry options, especially in 4v4, and frame advantage. And without knowing these things, your character like Hitakiri, you, you definitely can ignore a lot of these things, but when you move on to a different character, you don't play this character anymore. When you rep him up to rep her up to rep 80, and you're done playing with her, or you just get bored, you switch to a character like Nusha, if you actually have the balls to do that, <laughs> or even Gladiator, or Centurion, and even Peacekeeper and Warden. These characters you will absolutely get bodied. Nine times out of ten, you will not do well with them because you basically skip the, the tutorial and Hitakiri puts you up at the Grandmaster's level where you actually just stomp people. Not Grandmaster levels, but you're doing very well. A new Hitakiri can definitely even kick my ass from time to time because, oh, variable time heavies. I'm not going to be parrying those all the time. I will be attempting to parry them. And that's one of the biggest things about Hitakiri is that if you don't parry your heavies, you're going to have to eat that 50 50 mix and it can be quite scary if you're not a reaction god anyway so when i tell people to pick hit to carry it's only realistically you only want a player for a little bit to get a good upper hand against strong characters that have hyper armor like this guy right here highliner is a pretty popular pick at the moment Vera is still popular Medjai is popular ocelot all hit to carry can do well against these heroes and then you can start to see that their mix-ups are pretty strong you're like oh this character Ocelotto has a chain bash, and he also has four MS lights. Can my hyper armor and my heavy attacks deal with that? Why aren't they pairing my heavy attacks? Because you have variable timed heavies, and they do a lot of damage, and you also have hyper armor that goes into an unblockable mix. So that's why Hitakiri can pretty much do well against every single character in this game. She's S tier for dueling and S tier for 4v4s for sure, especially when it comes to casual matchmaking. Against like a high level stack, she might be a little bit hard to use, but she still has a lot of uses in my opinion. So when you move on to a different character like Centurion, Peacekeeper, Gladiator, and Warden, you know what I'm saying, like these are most of the 
uh, night characters. These night characters require a lot more fundamentals. Even Warmonger requires more fundamentals because she doesn't really have the safest tools in the game. Her dodge, her dodge abash is guard breakable. Her dodge attack is guard breakable, and you can also light check her if you have a character that has a decent hitbox for the lights or zone when she does that start up. Very easy to negate and counteract. And all these characters, team fighting capabilities are pretty meh. My opinion, even Conquer is pretty meh, and Lawbringer too, of course. These characters have some uses, but you have to understand that, oh, this character, like this guy right here, Raider, has hyper armor on all of his attacks. He's also softening GB, and also storming tap. A uh, Warlord also has hyper armor on everything as well, so you have to watch out for that. Varangian has a full block, so I can't just let Heavies fly anymore. So when you start playing these characters, you realize that I can't do everything in team fights. When you play a character like Hitakiri, I can pretty much do everything in team fights, and I don't really have to respect everything that they do. Sure, you'll lose out on some trades, but the problem is that you can keep attacking. There's no way to stop you unless there's actually a good ranking guard character, or an Aramusha, or actually even a Black Prior. These characters are the ones to negate your mix-ups, but then of course you also have your chain kick mix-up, and then you're fully charged heavy, and that can definitely mess up in Aramusha's blockade timings and also Varangian's timings. It's a pretty good counter to Varangian in my opinion because she's not going to want to try to crush and counter every single time she will miss on your variable timed heavies and she might eat that unblockable mix. As long as you can dodge her uh, her neutral bash, you should be fine as a heat to carry player. This character is strong but here he's also pretty strong too. So as a new player or someone that's trying to get better at the game, I'd say start with heat to carry and then move your way the characters that require a little bit more fundamentals even even warlord he, which can be no brain character because he has hyper armor on all of his moves on this heavies and his finisher heavies also his crushing counters are very strong then he has a full block but uh, they're not as powerful as a character as brangian with compared to the full block because this has way more utility than warlords but he does have legend capabilities so it makes him very strong so if you move on to this character you're going to do exceptionally well and learn important things while using a strong character he's like a middle ground when you want to use a character to improve your read significantly that's when you start going to characters like gladiator centurion peacekeeper warden and even lawbringer if if you want a bad day. If you want a bad day, you pick this character. This character, you have to know how to parry. Same thing for Centurion, except the thing about Centurion is he actually has a pretty strong gank. So once you understand how to gank and learn how to heavy parry or even light parry with wall splats, you get 22 damage for heavy parry with Haymaker. And of course with wall splats, you get a Shinto ton of damage with the charged heavy. So that's why I give Centurion the edge, and he still requires a lot of fundamentals. Peacekeeper and Warden, these characters, they require you to understand character reads, you need to understand where you need to place in team fights. If you don't know how to place yourself or reposition, then you're gonna have a rough time with these characters. Warden is probably one of those characters where I do not fear them unless there is actually a good player using them. They're like, oh wow, now we ha now I have to respect you. Same thing for Peacekeeper. He's a very bad pick if you don't have the reactions and reads and understand game sense, especially if you're fighting characters with hyper armor. If you like fight characters with hyper armor, like Raider, Berserker, Highlander. Or Ranging Guard and Jing Jun, Medjai, Pirate, all these curse Peacekeeper will be practically useless unless you have a team to help support you. If you, you can you can stall with your nice new hitboxes and your good recoveries, but you won't have enough staying power unless you have a teammate to come help. And so when I say that you want to learn fundamentals, the most important things is there's probably like two things is that when you get a parry, you need to understand that you can't just let heavies fly like heat to carry if you get a light parry you can just let heavies fly especially in a uh, 1v2 when you use warden or like a peacekeeper or even a centurion which if, if you get a light parry or a heavy parry there's some times where you literally can't even punish them you, you don't want to actually do anything centurion has like a zone that can hit people with a pretty nice like 180 degree so does peacekeeper but sometimes it's better to just not even do anything because you don't have hyper armor, you don't have any crutches to rely upon. And Heat to Carry just has all that hyper armor deal a lot of damage. A uh, Griffin and Lawbringer, these characters have an edge when they actually do get a parry because he has that unblockable zone. It can be pretty helpful and deal a lot of damn decent amount of damage. You can go into your mix, which basically you don't really want to be attacking too much in a 1v2, so that's where you have to learn game sense. Like, is this character going to bash me? If I'm fighting like a Varangian guard. Are they going to bash interrupt me to get into their offense and set up ganks? 
yes or no. And that's when you kind of want to be like, okay, so let's just dodge to reposition instead of going for a heavy parry punish. That's what I would do in that situation. And a lot of situations like that because they want to try to take as much health away from you or you pop revenge because inevitably you might get revenge but you're pretty much gonna be dead afterwards because dodge rolling exists and when you're picking a character like lawbringer he doesn't have a roll catcher and neither does conquer these characters are very they're in a very poor state in my opinion and they need a lot of help so these characters with parry punishes just sometimes where you can't do anything and there are situations where hitakiri can't do anything either but he has so much hyper armor and a very good chain mix that don't really have to respect too much things because it is an unreactable attack. And I want to come back to one thing too is that Shaman players are pretty much one of the worst players I've ever seen of all times, especially a new Shaman. I don't mean fl I don't mean to <laughs> flame anybody, but this character is very hard to use. They will inevitably be throwing your games because they think that their running heavies or their bash is very powerful, but in reality, they're really not. They're it's a really bad move to use like nine times out of ten this move the running attack is only used for roll catching not good for peeling at all and it's not really that good for initiating offense either because it's a pretty much a free parry i believe it's only five rms so it's a also really telling animation too it literally flies in the air and then inner kitter comes out you just parry that it's very simple and her bash is pretty solid but it also feeds a ton of revenge especially because when you when you use it on someone and they are not locked onto you and they get thrown sideways, there's a lot of times where you can't even guarantee damage or guarantee a full punish. Like most of the time, like most optimal punish is going to bash. You use your bash and then you use a zone attack and go into your mix or do nothing, especially if they are not locked onto you. If they're not locked onto you, which nine out of ten shaman players do not realize, if you use your zone attack or heavy into soft faint bleed cancel you will get parried nine times out of ten actually i'd say ten times out of ten that's probably the biggest mistake a shaman player can use or do so when i say that any when i tell people to play shaman play peacekeeper i'm telling them to learn the game and challenge yourself that's what i'm basically telling you guys to do because when you start off with a character like warlord or berserker and even Yormin Gunner, these characters are fairly easy to play. But when you jump onto a character like Shaman and even Valkyrie, which has like this really interesting mix up, you have to understand how she works first. Shaman is just someone that can't really open them up. In normal matchmaking, you can definitely do well with a Shaman against like decent players. Against like really insane players, this character is pretty much useless in teamfights unless you have a stack of your own. And that's pretty much not going to be the case in 9 times out of 10 because I know a lot of you guys like playing by yourself and you guys like just enjoying the game, coming home from work and relaxing. So this character will challenge you how to make reads, how to position well, when to initiate your offense, especially if you're just roaming around with stealth and jumping attack people, which is a pretty good strategy with this character. You know, attacking people out of lock is what I usually do, setting up traps, going for ledges, you know, understanding that this character has a better ledge potential than Warlord sometimes, man. This character is insane. And that goes for like Peacekeeper and all these characters that don't really have that much going for them. Kensei is also another one that is pretty underrated. He's strong, but he does require some good fundamentals. You can definitely be baited using your dodge attack way too much and using your triple chain lights, which are easy parries, really good players. But you know, this character. Warden, a Peacekeeper, Centurion, Lawbringer, and Gladiator, and even Warmonger. Guys, I know Warmonger is pretty strong, but uh, she still requires the fundamentals of For Honor. You know, I th even Griffin is stronger than Warmonger. And that says a lot about how Warmonger pretty much has been par prep. The only thing keeping her alive is basically her feats. Her feats are game winning, but her entire kit is pretty mediocre in my opinion. She didn't have a Vortex like Warden. And so, to get better at For Honor, guys, you have to, at the end of the day, you have to, you have to play a character that doesn't have every single tool if you want to get to the highest levels of gaming where you play at a competitive level you can't really necessarily rely on my advice and playing like a weak character what you have to rely to get to be the best player is you have to go to other sources with the discord um, and set up scrims and play with the best players that's how you get better but to get better in like the matchmaking lobbies you can just play by yourself and do really well and get some really cool parries and anti-ganks and stuff like that 
this is what you want to do. You want to you want to challenge yourself. You want to play characters that have restricted moves, not too not too much of restricted, but you want to have a character that also has some decent offense and some decent defense. Okay, so when you play a character like Lawmer, you get an anti gank. That is the most satisfying thing in the entire game. In the entire game, I cannot I cannot tell you why I stopped playing duels, and that the reason why I stopped playing duels is because anti ganks. Like this is why. This is the reason why I stopped playing duels, because this is just so much more satisfying than getting like a few parries here and there in duels. Getting multiple parries, getting multiple kills, and killing like more than two people in revenge. That is the best thing For Honor has given us. It's that feeling of actually surviving all of that, going back to your base and healing and having the enemy demoralized because they're like, wow, I can't believe he killed me. So that's why I love playing Lawbringer and I've, I've been enjoying the crap out of Warden and Peacekeeper. Well, not Peacekeeper, actually. I, I do love playing Peacekeeper, but I also have been playing a crap ton of other characters, Centurion, um, a lot of the lower tier characters, even Raider has been really fun, and Warlord, these characters have been really good for me. But uh, that's how you, that's, that is how you would become a better player, by playing characters that don't have the strongest strength in the game. And Hate to Cure is a new trap, but I think she's a good starter character. You definitely need to change your main you want to actually be a lot better in this game in my opinion okay and if you're picking any of the outlanders you're absolutely going to dominate too so i would avoid picking these characters as they are pretty much pay to win they have remained top tier for the longest time ever since launch all all the outlanders have remained top tiers for a very long time ever since they released so they're not going to anywhere but you can always come and pick them up whenever you feel like it once you have once you've started playing like weaker characters or characters that don't have every single tool in the game, you will be a god when you play these characters. You'll be like, oh, I didn't realize I, had a f uh, I can use that. Like, I can use that more consistently. You know, I have this tool now, so I can just basically destroy every single body that I fight because I can do whatever I want. I can essentially, I don't have to respect as much things as I used to, especially with Pirate. Dodge attacks are insane unless there's a Rangian. Doesn't even matter though because you can you can position pretty well and her chain bash is very good. Afira is ridiculously good still. An Ocelotl, incredible ganker and duelist. There's just no way that you could actually be stopped once you get good with all of these weaker characters. The weaker characters, get good with them, then move on to the S tiers and boom, unstoppable. But I mean, that's just my thoughts. I wanted to explain that on stream. I, I didn't want to explain on stream because it's a very long time. To explain it took about like 10 or so minutes but that's the gist of how you want get to be a better player learning all those revenge you don't even have to actually learn about revenge and stuff it's like if you watch one of my videos about revenge that's very important learning about tags is also very important but i think increasing your skill for fundamentals and learning about reads and how to position and not actually just no brain it would make you a better player very simply, it would just make you a better player by learning character and playing weaker characters against the top tiers so that you can make better reads and make sure that you can at least, at least block 500 MS lights. If you can't do that, then it might be Joe over for you. But you know, sometimes I do, I can't even block 500 MS lights too, but it's only because I'm not really paying attention. If I'm paying attention, I'm going to be blocking those 100% of the time. Uh, pairing is a different story that will have to be a lot more in depth focus on each individual character. But uh, this is probably my advice for new players that are coming into the game and trying to learn the characters, especially strong characters. Once, Because there's so much characters in here, there's about 35 I believe, so that is a lot of knowledge checks. You will absolutely get stomped from time to time, and that's okay. That is actually okay. As long as you learn something every single time you get beat, that's the most important thing my opinion so i hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you for coming out to the streams and i hope you guys enjoyed the dark type video really appreciate all your guys support that'll be it for me and more good stuff coming very soon Bye bye